All right, so yesterday we talked about extrinsic volcanism as a means of talking about how volcanoes work. So the extrusive volcanism is, is what appears on the outside of the earth and usually it's extrusive, so you have smaller crystals forming quickly. And what we're gonna focus on today is intrusive volcanism. And intrusive volcanism happens under the ground. So X means outside, intrusive means inside the earth. So these are things that happen slowly. Uh, they form slowly over time as, uh, as they are trapped down underneath the layers of the earth. So you, there are multiple kinds of intrusive volcanism. There are volcanic dikes, uh, which are vertical uh, stripes of hardened magma. You have horizontal sills, which are uh, which horizontally form as layers get as magma gets squeezed in between horizontal layers of the earth, and then you have, um, for example, larger structures of intrusive volcanism called batholiths, where you have a large, huge uh, magma chamber that has solidified over time far down underneath the surface of the earth. The problem with intrusive volcanism is that most of the time these time these things happen far down deep under the earth and so what we want to do is we want to figure out well how do those things get to the surface of the earth which is usually by uplift by plate tectonic forces or by erosion of the layers above the formations eroding down so you actually observe so you can actually observe and see the layers appear as the layers wear away on top and the layers that harden underneath the surface of the earth are now becoming apparent and so what we're going to do today is we're going to see a demonstration that actually mimics how these things form underground and we're doing it in such a way that you can see them form underground which normally you never would be able to see. We're not going to do the forces of erosion just so that you can see it from the top but we'll, we're going to be able to see through the model such that the, the actual formation of these dikes and sills uh, are apparent. So that's what we're going to do right now. You've got to have a gelatin mold, and this is just plain uh, Knox gelatin, and all it is is there are packets, there are these little packets, and it's the, the packets are one packet per cup is the per cup of hot water, that's the consistency you want. And so uh, all I did was just mix up a, lot, a big pot of boiling water, one cup of liquid per packet, and it gets to be about this consistency, so it's pretty hard, regular jello doesn't work as well, so it's kind of a kind of a more thick consistency. This is going to be flipped upside down. This is going to be the mountain. And then inside is going to be the magma that's being injected into the system. And the mag magma being injected in the system is just plain old chocolate syrup. And I've kind of trialed and errored and figured out the chocolate syrup has about the right um, consistency to actually keep its shape and form in the gelatin mold. I've tried a bunch of other stuff, they don't work as well. And then you have a plate uh, it can be a tin plate, such as this, or it can be a plastic plate with holes poked through the bottom. And, um, and then you have a syringe, the larger size the better to hold more magma, so this is going to act as the magma chamber. And the magma chamber will be filled with the magma, and then that has to fit into the holes, because the mold is going to be sitting on top of here. And then what you have to do is, you have to support the mold high up so you can get underneath it. You can do it with pieces of wood as I have, or you can do it with pieces of cardboard tubing. Uh, the size kind of the size of the syringe or the injector, which could be a plastic bag for all that matter, could will determine the size of your supports. So I found that the higher works a little better because you can really get up into it. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take some hot water and we're, the, the mold has to come out in one piece. And so I've just taken boiling water, put the mold into the water, and that will melt just the outer layer of the mold so that it will come out of the mold in one piece and you won't have any breakages along the external surface of the mountain because that way it doesn't work as well with the jello or with the chocolate sauce being squirted into it. And so you just kind of set it in there. Uh, depending on the temperature of your water, it might take a couple seconds. This water has cooled down a little bit so it might take a little bit longer. But you just kind of feel it and, and uh, if you get enough of it melted, you'll actually be able to kind of twist it inside the mold. And once it's at that point, 
that's uh, that's a that's that's what you want. So when you tip it up upside down, it comes out in one nice piece sides. So you can kind of see it's 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 kind of it's a lot more jiggly in there. So let's see if we can get this to flip over now. And voila, there's our mold. Very possible. So it's supported up here and you've got the holes underneath and now all I have to do is inject the chocolate. This is Insert it into one of the holes and press it up in there. And then when everyone is fully anticipating a grand show, you simply press on the plunger and this is what you get. What you, what you see there is a nice vertical column of magma forming with a couple little offshoots at the bottom. So we have a series of volcanic dikes, a dike complex as you would call it. And then if I continue to push, uh, magma will continue to rise up in there. And if it gets to the side, it will eventually push through and you have an eruption where the extrusive, where the intrusive becomes extrusive. And so in this case, that would be a volcanic eruption extrusively but all of the magma that remained inside would therefore would then harden over time and become the intrusive landform.